I wanted to create a video on the cholesterol myth simply because it's been so brainwashed into our heads from 1950 more than any other myth that has been in existence. Uh, Ansel Keys, in 1950, a researcher did this huge study to correlate all these countries. Like a, He wanted to study uh, different countries in relationship to how many of them had heart disease and, and what they ate, if they ate more fat. So he studied a half a dozen countries, and this is what he came up with. In a thumbnail sketch, he found that we have heart attacks here, and we have fat consumption here. And he found that these countries, the more fat that they consumed, the more heart attacks that they got. So then he was kind of like the father of the lipid heart attack uh, theory, and he was on Time Magazine, and from there on out, it kind of went south, and it's just been brainwashed into... Uh, our minds. But here's a couple little things. He, he basically kind of um, altered the information just a little bit. Here's two simple facts that he um, manipulated. The study wasn't done with a half a dozen countries. It was done with 22 countries. And he left out the countries who ate a lot of fat and had low heart disease. Okay, So these countries, Norway and Holland, he left those out, okay, and there was other ones as well. And then he also left out the countries who ate low fat that had high amounts of heart attacks, like Chile. Now, if you include all of the data in the study, it pretty much looks like this, okay? It doesn't give you any data. It doesn't show any statistical uh, significance of people that eat saturated fat actually have increased cholesterol or people that have increased cholesterol showed any increase in heart disease. In fact, you want to know how many studies in the world that were done that actually showed a relationship uh, between these? Zero. None of them came out the, the way they wanted it. So what they do with any other researcher would do uh, is basically manipulate the data and um, make it look make it align to what their theory is so they can, um, you know, obviously get more grants. But the point is that there is no study that shows this relationship here. And it's basically the greatest scam of the century. So let's go into a little bit more about what HDL is and LDL. You've heard HDL being good cholesterol and LDL being bad cholesterol. Well, it's not even cholesterol. What does it stand for? High density lipoproteins low-density lipoproteins. Those are proteins. They're not even cholesterol. They're envelopes that carry cholesterol through the body. So the HDL, so-called good cholesterol, carries the old cholesterol to the liver to be recycled. Okay, now, why does our body recycle cholesterol? If it's so bad, why does it recycle? Well, the fact is it's not bad and we need cholesterol. Our bodies make 2,000 milligrams of cholesterol every single day. Near every single cell in your body makes cholesterol. An egg would be 300 milligrams of cholesterol. The truth is that when you eat more, eat less cholesterol, your body just makes more of it because it acts um, as a band-aid to help arteries that are corroding or getting ulcers or getting damaged or getting inflammation. It acts to help as a healing agent. And that's why cholesterol is in the artery because it's trying to heal it as a scab it's not the culprit, it's the middleman. Most of our brains are made from cholesterol to allow for the insulation to travel with the nerves. We have all the cell walls are made from cholesterol. Uh, most of our hormones are made from cholesterol, especially the sex ones. So we need this cholesterol desperately in order to survive. If you didn't have cholesterol, you wouldn't be able to survive. And uh, cholesterol is also needed to make vitamin D to help convert and increase the calcium into the blood so then we can take the other vitamins to transport into the uh, bone. But I've watched that video on vitamin K2 because that's very important But because it tells you the other half of the story with clogged arteries. Um, so we have this good cholesterol which carries old cholesterol to the liver, recycles it. That means it's good. And then the bad cholesterol carries cholesterol from the liver into the tissues. Okay. But they're really not bad. They're just trans they're envelopes to transport calcium back and forth. Out of the LDL, 
only a very small part of the LDL is really, really bad. And it's the very small little particles. Because in LDL, there's a lot of different, there's different sizes. You have these big fluff balls and you got these tiny little pebbles of LDL. And the real small ones are the ones that form um, the placking around and, and inside, the t in, inside the artery itself. Uh, and that's why people are against them. But the purpose is the body's just trying to heal itself. So now let's talk about what is the problem with heart attacks, okay? Well, <clears throat> it's inflammation. It's inflammation because the wall of the artery is damaged from inflammation. And it's kind of like an ulcer. It's a degenerative type situation. And that's why the cholesterol and the calcium comes in to help heal it. And then that's the, the clogging factor. So what causes inflammation? Sugar, okay? Sugar is the big culprit. Sugar is very inflammatory, um, and the amount of sugar that we eat not only will spike cholesterol and, and triglycerides because the body's trying to heal the damaged arteries, but it will clog up your arteries more than anything. And so, and that includes the whole grains that the doctors are telling you it's okay, or the government, whatever. Um, so it comes down to sugar. So the problem is not the fat, it's the sugar, okay? So that's interesting. Um, the other thing that causes inflammation is um, having an adrenal problem as well because your adrenal gland secretes cortisol. And cortisol is a natural anti-inflammatory, but when you lose that effect, you end up with inflammation in the body. But in a thumbnail sketch, um, you don't have to be afraid of cholesterol anymore. You can go ahead and consume cholesterol. I've been eating four eggs every single day for the last... 20 years, my cholesterol is about 160, uh, 170, 160, which is totally normal. Um, and lastly, I want to tell you something. Um, where, how do you increase the good cholesterol? To increase good cholesterol, you have to consume egg yolks, butter, and cheese. That's right. Egg yolks, butter, and cheese, especially from grass-fed cows, um, will increase the good cholesterol Okay, what increases bad cholesterol? Sugar and junk food. Okay? So, I hope that helped a little bit unbrainwash you um, with this cholesterol myth. But, and I want to leave you with this one more thing. IQ, or having a high, high IQ, does not equal sanity. Just because someone is so-called educated doesn't mean they're sane, all right? I'll see you in the next video.